Right now, tonight here at 5 o'clock, here we go again. Another renewed effort to study whether JCPS needs to be split up. And today, we're diving into the question, does the state even have the power to make it happen? Hello, everybody. Thanks for joining us. I'm Doug Profit, And I'm Shay McAllister. We discussed the issue with one of two lawmakers who are pushing to create a task force to look into the size of JCPS. Senior reporter Isaiah Kim Martinez and photojournalist Jessica Farley are breaking down what Republicans are trying to accomplish here. Isaiah. Well, Shay, Shay Doug, here's what it comes down to, right? Even if this task force is created and the study recommends dividing JCPS, any kind of law to facilitate a split could run into legal troubles. So the question, what is the state GOP trying to achieve with this latest effort? The months long aftermath of JCPS's transportation debacle has entered its next chapter, potentially another review of whether Kentucky's largest public school district is too big. Really annually, it's, it's a continuing problem along with the, the downward test scores that we're seeing. We need to take a look at this. Kentucky Senator Lindsey Titchener is one of two Republicans who filed resolutions to launch a team dedicated to studying JCPS's size and determining whether splitting it up into smaller districts with its own governing bodies would help. Do you believe JCPS, as it's constructed, is hindering student achievement in any way, shape, or form? I believe in some ways, yes. But I think the more manageable a district can be, the more successful it can be. We confirmed even if the study led to a recommendation to divide JCPS, there is not yet a clear way to make that happen. The state constitution prevents laws that specifically target local governing agencies like a public school system. Meaning, even if a bill was filed to split JCPS, the courts would likely strike it down. So the question, why go through all this trouble? Here's the way, way I think it would be great is if Jefferson County says, yeah, Let's move forward and we don't have to have a piece of legislation, but we all come to the same agreement that let's find the best path forward for our students. And, and if this is what we recommend, let's get them on board and let's work together. So are you hoping for some admission by JCPS that the way they're doing it isn't correct? That would be nice. <laughs> <laughs> Opponents to the resolution worry about racial equity and how local tax funding would be divided. Would you say that that potentially could raise some issues when it comes to a split district? Uh, it, it could definitely raise some issues, but I have no doubt that we'll take all of that into consideration. And Titchener acknowledged Superintendent Polio is making some good changes like the new choice system, but she says it'll likely take years to see results. Time they don't have. Now also quick note here, I asked her how many districts within JCPS could be a good number to her. She mentioned four as a possible starting point. Shay. Very interesting. All right, Isaiah, thank you very much. Well, just up I-65 in Indianapolis, they have 11 public school districts and several charter schools. Focus reporter Travis Breeze spoke to one of the 11 districts about how they operate and asked an education expert if it's fair to compare the two cities. You can see that story all new tomorrow at 6. Also in Frankfurt today, a $300 million proposal that would fund early childhood education throughout the state. As we know, child care in Kentucky is struggling. Staffing shortages, not enough spots for kids, and COVID funding running dry, all causing issues for parents. Senator Danny Carroll hopes this bill can prevent what he's calling a crisis. There's a desperate need for child care in areas where we might not even have it. But when they are able to work, they have more access to secure food sources, to stable housing, reliable transportation, and health care. Inside the proposal, scholarship programs for teachers wanting to further their education for early childhood. Teachers will get some sort of child care assistance while they're working, start up funding for child care centers in areas without access, and more. An update, more news here at 5 o'clock in southern Indiana today. Three students were treated for their injuries after this school bus crashed on Charlestown Pike. That's in Clark County this morning. Indiana State Police tell us the greater Clark County school bus drove off the side of the road and hit a tree. Police tell us the bus driver was unconscious when they got there. The driver and one student uh, were taken to the hospital by ambulance with injuries that are not life threatening. Two other students were taken by private means to the hospital with minor injuries. The other students were taken to school where they were offered counseling services if needed. And another story about student safety, a concern is growing. The ability to get the kids on campus safely without a crossing guard is a huge problem. 
of mind for Metro Council after several close, close calls and collisions right outside school campuses this year. Students are dodging more traffic than normal, many without the help of a crossing guard. Tonight at 6, Brooke Hash explains why and how council members plan to cover more ground in the coming months. Right here tonight, there's a new director in charge of Louisville Metro Records, and her name will sound familiar to you. Marianne Butler is taking over as the executive director of records compliance, and she's made a career of public service. She was the District 15 council person for 15 years and worked in the Kentucky Public Service Commission. Marianne has committed her career to public service. She understands the importance of open access to our public records. And I know that she will help us continue to enhance our efforts to respond to open records requests in a timely manner. This decision comes after the Metro saw recent scrutiny. In January, the Kentucky Attorney General's office decided Metro Louisville intentionally delayed releasing records which fall under the Open Records Act without proper justification. Well, after a very unpredictable weather system, possibly rain, possibly snow, we've returned to sunshine and blue skies in Kentuckyana. It was an amazing day outside. Uh, plan on a bright Valentine's Day. We're getting ahead of ourselves. Tomorrow's Valentine's Day, right? That's right. Okay, <laughs> good. I was, I was a little worried about that on the you screen. You better stop by Publix and buy some flowers on your way home if you forgot. <laughs> Lots already. of options out there. But Colleen, that snow was all supposed to go south, but the city of Lexington, they didn't have a drop of snow either. No, it really targeted Nashville, that low pressure system. Just just went south by 50 miles and that can mean a huge difference in our forecast. We didn't even get one single drop of rain here in Jefferson County, which is great because you know it is a nice day. We had blue skies, temperatures in the 50s, still nice and pretty right now overlooking from the U of L campus. So mild temperatures right now, 54 degrees, beautiful sunshine, 51 clocking in in E town, 53 in Bardstown and over the next few hours, we're slowly going to fall to the upper 40s by 7 p.m. temperature at 48 and then 44 by 9. So it is going to get a bit chilly overnight tonight with temperatures again in the mid 30s for tomorrow morning. But as we head towards the afternoon for your Valentine's Day, high of 61, beautiful sunshine in store, really going to be an awesome setup for Wednesday. Now things are going to take a turn. Enjoy the outdoors tomorrow. Even on Thursday, we'll have a few scattered showers, but we have our next system heading our way. Still in the 50s on Thursday, but we are reinforcing that cold air with a cold front passing through Friday night through Saturday morning. We have lows back in the 20s with highs actually staying in the 30s. I'll talk more about that cold air. That's in that forecast for your week and ahead coming up. Doug Shea. All right, Colleen, thank you very much. Today, the man responsible for killing a Louisville photographer and shooting several other people during the 2020 protests was sentenced to prison time. A Jefferson County judge sentencing Stephen Lopez to 30 years in prison today. Earlier this year, Lopez took a plea in the fatal shooting of Tyler Girth. It happened in Jefferson Square Park, the heart of the 2020 protests revolving the killing of Breonna Taylor. Lopez took a gun from another protester and then shot into the crowd. WHS 11's Jose Alonso and senior photojournalist Alyssa Newton covered the hearing in court today and the sentencing. They have the emotional moments as he spoke directly to the victim's family. There are many emotions coming from the family members here at the Jefferson County Judicial Center. Feelings of agony, fear, and ultimately forgiveness from one of the victim's sisters. Meanwhile, Lopez expressed his own sorrow in a personal statement to the court. Walking out handcuffed and in an orange jumpsuit, Stephen Lopez, along with the family of Tyler Girth, were ready to end this nearly three and a half year ordeal. Tyler's sisters, Brittany Lowen and Tiffany Hensley, read their statements and also statements from their parents. I cannot find enough words to convey how sorry I am, to say how remorseful I am, truly from the bottom of my heart. I hope that it was sincere and that uh, he is truly remorseful and um, I hope that he heard my words, that I want him to know who Tyler was and that hopefully Tyler can be an inspiration to him to uh, make the most of his opportunity. Earlier this year, Lopez decided to change his plea deal to guilty, bringing this case to a close. He will now serve a 30 year sentence and will not be eligible for parole. Reporting in Louisville, I'm Jose Alonso, WHAS 11 on your side. The Garth family also mentioned since Tyler's death, they've created a foundation to honor his legacy. If you want to learn more about it, you can find the link on our website, whas11.com. 
More news here tonight at 5 o'clock. The Indiana Attorney General's office is weighing in on a bond appeal from the former Clark County Indiana Sheriff Jamie Knoll. In a brief filed yesterday, the Attorney General's office asked the Indiana Court of Appeals to dismiss that move. Last month, Knoll's attorney appealed the $75,000 bond set right after Jamie Knoll's arrest on 15 felony charges. The bond also required him to turn over his passport and guns. The Attorney General's office argued that the motion doesn't matter now because Noel paid the bond and was released the same day. It adds if the court does not dismiss the appeal, it should be affirmed instead. Noel's attorney Larry Wilder has previously declined to explain the point of the bond appeal to WHAS 11. Right now, investigators are working to determine what caused an overnight fire, which spread across three houses in Louisville's Russell neighborhood. It broke out around 11 o'clock last night on West Jefferson, and it spread quickly. It took 60 firefighters an hour to get those flames under control. Louisville Fire says luckily no one was hurt. An Indiana man is being called a lifesaver after helping get his neighbor out of a burning mobile home. And it was all thanks to some training he had done years before. Indianapolis firefighters rushed to Madison Avenue in Indianapolis at about 9 a.m. Sunday to put out the flames. Before the crews arrived, Vance Van Landingham ran over to help his neighbor still inside. Vance says Tony Stevens was laying down just feet away from the entrance where the milk crate sits. Vance started to pull him to safety. Life-saving skills he learned when he was 12 in a cadet program with the Perigen Volunteer Fire Department. In the instant, all of that came back and I I believe that's why Tony's alive. Right now, Tony is in a medically induced coma and has swelling in his chest. He's an Army veteran on a fixed income who moved to the home there in Indianapolis with his dog, Wu, about six months ago.